Hi, Jason here with PC Builder. AMD just launched a new chip that should make you rethink the way you're building gaming PCs. AMD just launched a chip that gives the same performance as the 2600 for only $85. It's going to completely change the PC building landscape, especially given how GPU bound builds are these days. And it's not just for the low end either. Builds all the way up to a thousand, maybe twelve hundred or even fifteen hundred dollars could benefit from this. Before we get started, please help us out. Like and subscribe and click the bell button at the bottom. We're a new channel. We want to produce great content for PC builders and every like and every follow right now really helps us. Okay, so what is that chip? Well, it's a chip with an old name, but new performance. It's the AMD Ryzen 5 1600 AF, not the AE. That's the old 1600 chip from a couple years ago. This chip is nicknamed the AF. So that's the chip you want to find. Here it is on Amazon. It was actually not that easy to find for me uh, initially. But you're definitely looking for this AF here, and also down here when they have the product description, you're looking for the one that, that reads AF on it. Um, it's $85 right now on Amazon, and you might be thinking, well, it's a Ryzen 5 1600s. Yeah, this, this chip came out like a million years ago. This is a 12 nanometer chip refresh of the original 14 nanometer chip. So the performance, Gamers Nexus and a number of other sites have tested this, the performance is identical to a 2600 right now, including that if you want to overclock it, it will overclock up to at least 4.2 gigahertz. We can watch their much longer, amazing, amazing video going through 30 minutes of benchmarks on it to prove that it's effectively a 2600. So I'm not just going to repeat content that other people have put out. What I want to do is show you how this really changes the PC building landscape. The fact that we've got a processor now that will allow us to, to get about 85 to 90 percent of the frame rate out of our graphics cards for only $85, it massively, massively changes the way that we can do builds. I've lined up a couple different PC part picker builds we can go through and I can show you the difference. Now you think, you think that you're going to see the biggest change in the build at the low end, but you're actually going to see the biggest changes at the higher end. Just wait until we get there. Now, here's the thing about builds. Right now, and in particular over the last couple of years, it's become very easy to become GPU bound. In, order, in other words, the CPU, it's harder and harder for the CPU to actually be the bottleneck in most builds. In most builds, the, G, the GPU is going to be almost your entire bottleneck. Now, yes, if you put a 2080 Ti, in a 2600 and a 2080 Ti in an i9 9900K, yes, you're going to see a frame difference, right? So there is some difference between frequency of chips, but it's not that significant, especially when you're dealing with lower end chips and lower end graphics cards. So we've got two builds here. On the left, we've got the Ryzen 2600, it's a $550 build. On the right, we've got the Ryzen 1600 AF. Now, these builds, uh, at least for the CPU, are functionally the same. The board is the same. It's the cheapest available, acceptable motherboard. Uh, we've got 16 meg, uh, six, excuse me, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3000 memory. We've got a one terabyte solid state drive. We've got on the left, we've got an RX 570 four gigabyte card. We've got in both builds the same kind of cheap, acceptable case. It actually comes with three fans. And then we've got a, you know, a decent power supply powering both of them. The difference is on the build on the right, we're able to put in a GTX 1650 Super, which right now is outperforming even up to an RX 590. That's a big difference between these two, build, these two builds right here. Why would you buy a 2600 at this point? I don't really know. Now we've gone up a whole nother price tier. We're now at $750. This is starting to get more into a mid-range build. We see something like a Ryzen 7 2700 as opposed to a 2600 or, or even a 2200G or 3200G processor. We're actually upgrading the motherboard to a, a Tomahawk Max. 
we put in 16 gigs now of 32 DDR4 3200 uh, megahertz memory. We've gone from a solid state drive to a, an MVME, M, an M2 drive. We've also upgraded our graphics card. We're now at a 1660 Super. I've also upgraded the case a little bit because I think at this price point you'd probably want to. Um, we're sticking with the same power supply because, again, 450 watts is more than what we need right now. Now let's look at what happens when we put in the, the Ryzen 5 1600 AF processor. Again, don't pay attention to this. Uh, it's actually not in PC part picker yet, so I just grabbed this because it says Ryzen 5 1600. This refers to the old chip, and I put in the price at $85. So we've got the same board, we've got the same memory, got the same... Uh, NVMe drive, but in this case we were able to, for $15 more, come up to an RX 5700. That's a massive increase in terms of the FPS performance of these two machines. Now, the the 2600, the 1600 AF, which has a 2600 level of performance, that's plenty to drive this card right here. If you had the 2700 in this build, would you get some more frames? Sure, but if you're on a budget and your 750 is about all you're looking to spend, my goodness, I don't know why you wouldn't buy this build seven days a week and twice on Sunday over this build every single time. It just doesn't make any sense. Okay, now get ready for some real impact. We've gone all the way up to a $900 build. This is about the level where you're going to see uh, 1440 or you know at least a 144 hertz 1080p build you're gonna see Ryzen 3600 in here typically let's take a look at it MSI Tomahawk board with the Ryzen 5 3600 we've upgraded our memory to DDR4 3600 this is the cheapest uh, CL16 kit that I could find we're sticking with our one terabyte M.2 drive We've actually come up now from the previous build to an RX 5700. We stick in, we're sticking it out with the case, and we're sticking it out with this power supply. You could go, you could spend 10, 15 bucks more here and get a bigger power supply at this point. You know, I, I wouldn't, but you could. That's $900, $903. Now let's take a look at what happens when we drop in our Ryzen 5 1600 AF. Now. Again, this is not in PC part picker, so you can just ignore the 3.2 gigahertz part of it. I had to put the price in manually. I'm sure they will get it in there eventually. So I was able to upgrade the motherboard, but we'll get to that in a second. We actually are able to come down in terms of the RAM. I think the 3200 kit is probably going to be better uh, for the, the, the Ryzen 5 1600. I don't think you'll see, you can see as big of an increase, so we actually came down in that. But the biggest savings went into our graphics card here. So we went all the way up to a Radeon RX 5700 XT. And frankly, this is one of the good cards. Okay, you can find an RX 5700 XT for as little as $350. Those cards have thermal issues. You don't want them, but you can find them. I went ahead and got the good one. Now listen, if you didn't want to upgrade the memory, if you didn't want to downgrade rather the memory, you could have stuck with the, the other kit. I decided to downgrade it since it's not really going to help our performance out that much at a 2600 level and dump it into a far, far better, better motherboard. I mean, the audio on this board, I own this board. It's it, This board is just leagues better than the Tomahawk. It's basically the Tomahawk if the Tomahawk had amazing features. So again, which build would you rather have? Would you rather have the build with a Ryzen 5 1600 AF driving a 5700 XT, or would you rather have the 3600, the newer, the newer chip, driving a 5700? Yes, I know the 5700 overclocks, and you can get into the BIOS and 99% of you are not going to do that, right? So let's just let's let's stay where 99% of us are actually going to live. This is a much better build. And we actually accomplished this build by coming down from Ryzen 3600. Now listen, I could keep going and I could keep going on and on and on about this. We could go Ryzen 3700. At some point, you're going to start hitting gains in non-gaming applications that I think you just can't ignore anymore. Um, 
some of those games, especially if you do a lot of video editing, we're looking mostly at gaming focused builds. So for gaming focused builds, I don't think the Ryzen 5 3600 is where you want to be right now. I really think you want to be the Ryzen 5 1600 AF and then insert whatever just went through your mind when I said AF in there instead. I think this dramatically changes the way we approach it, approach building new PCs, new gaming PCs. Um, frankly, you could still stream on this rig here. You know, would it be the best stream? I mean, I would switch out the the RX 5700 to probably a 2060 Super, um, just because the NVEC coder. Anyway, I'm not going to get into streaming versus versus gaming. Pure gaming build, hands down, RX 5700 XT. Frankly, even the RX 5700 probably. Uh, but if you are streaming, I would look at the the NVIDIA cards in there. You probably get away with the Radeon, but the encoder is just not anywhere as good. That's the video. Thank you so much. I hope you learned something. If you did, please remember to give us a like and click subscribe. This is the kind of content we're going to be putting out. I hope you learned something today that helps you build a much better, cheaper, and cost-effective gaming PC in the future. Catch you on the next one.